know that gluey stuff that makes dough doughy? That's gluten. In simple terms, it's the sticky protein substance in wheat. About one in seven people in North America suffer from some sort of gluten sensitivity. Today, we meet the gluten challenge head on with a simply delicious dessert. Chickpea chocolate cake with vanilla ice cream and raspberry coulis. Gluten free and did I mention delicious. I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Welcome back to Cooking on the Coast. Today, we're creating a chickpea chocolate cake with raspberry coulis and vanilla ice cream. You won't believe how absolutely fantastic it tastes. Now let's get started. What you need, food processor, obviously, and some chickpeas to get started. We're gonna put these right in here. There we go, we got about one large can worth right there. And then right away, we wanna crack some eggs into this. So this recipe here calls for four eggs. Now, chickpeas are super cool. They're full of protein, really great for vegetarian cuisine and also, as you're gonna see, this amazing chocolate cake. This is a lot of fun because when you have your guests over, you can try and ask, try and put wagers on uh, who can guess what the main ingredient is in this cake. And I didn't guess what it was when someone first introduced it to me, so I'm sure your guests won't either. Now, this is gonna make a bit of noise here, but it's imperative. Can you hear me over this thing? I know it's pretty loud, but bear with me. It's really important to get this nice and smooth, incorporate your eggs and your chickpeas. We're not using any flour at all, so the chickpeas are actually the binder here. Let's take a quick look. Whew. It's almost there. You can see it's starting to get really nice and smooth. Give it one more blast here. Here we go again. Whew. You can see right through here, it's really starting to get nice and smooth. Turn that off for a few seconds. Now, sugar, right in there. And then baking powder. Of course, baking powder in baking because it adds a leavener. This stuff reacts with heat and will cause our cake to rise. That and the egg will give us a nice fluffy texture. Okay, incorporate it all together. Now as that's going, final thing to do, chickpea and chocolate, of course. We have some chocolate on the stove right here that's just been sitting over a bay marine. And we'll just give it a quick stir. You can see how velvety that is. I love chocolate, look at that. Once all that chocolate is dissolved, we go right back into our food processor and we're almost ready to get things into the oven. Okay, perfect. Pour it right in here. Woo, look at that, velvety. Amazing. Smells great, and it's gonna taste even better. Now gluten-free is one of those things, you can do salads, you lots of main courses that are gluten-free. But in the restaurants, it's really challenging to find something on a menu that's for dessert besides fruit, let's say. So this one here is gonna be awesome. Give it another blast, look at the color change already. Looks incredible. Once it's all incorporated, we're done. Now, I'd like to take this chance to show you a really cool trick on how to make a liner in your springform pan. We're using a 10 inch springform pan here and some parchment paper. I almost got ahead of myself there. Take a normal sheet, fold it over, fold it again, and then using this closed seam sides, we wanna make a little arrow, or like a paper plane or something like that. Now, here's the trick. Hopefully you can see this all carefully. Look for the middle of your pan, to the edge, and this is where we're gonna start cutting. Okay. Right about there. Kinda cut in a little cone shape. How's that look? Okay, now watch, we open her up. And boom, we have a circle that's gonna line the bottom of our pan. There we go. It's okay if it goes up the edges a little bit, that's just fine. Last thing we wanna do is just give it a nice spray with a little bit of cooking oil so it doesn't stick. There we are, and away we go. Let's get this into the pan. Use our chocolate spatula here, and just dump that right in there. Looks great. At this point, you don't even, you can't even tell there's chickpeas in there. OK, 
Okay, scrape out all those last bits. There we go. Don't want to leave any of it behind. Now just smooth it out a little bit. And we'll get this straight into the oven. There we are on a middle rack is perfect. In it goes. Now that's gonna cook for about, say, 35, 40 minutes. Again, cooking is all about feeling, touching, looking, and seeing. You can't just throw it in there, set the timer, and figure it's gonna be done when it's done. You check it, you find out, okay? Before we go to break, I'd like to get started with a little raspberry coulis that's gonna incorporate it. Now I have some frozen raspberries here that we froze while they were in season, so they're packed full of flavor still, and sugar, really simple. Turn our stove on. And we'll get that up to a simmer. Let all that sugar dissolve. We're gonna cook it for about 10 minutes. Now, we'll be back to finish our gluten-free chickpea chocolate cake later in the show. But first, right after the break, we're going out of the studio. You'll wanna stick around for that. Welcome back to Cooking on the Coast. We're, we're down here at Capital Iron with Mike Black. How are you, Mike? Good to see you, Garrett. Good to see you, too. We're on location in the outdoor kitchen, and Mike's got some rotisserie for us. That's right, Garrett. Today, uh, we're going to rotis rotisserie. Rotisserie. Easy for me to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Try saying that fast three times. A sirloin roast. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So nice. we're just going to get this uh, out of the bag here, and I'll get it on the spit, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the recipe. Sounds good. Oh, there we go. I have to say too, uh, marinating in a Ziploc bag like that or in a bag like that is uh, is a great way to do it, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. And I mean, I, what it reminds me of, I don't know if you remember or heard of a chef by the name of Rob Rainsford. I do. Yeah, yeah. he used to do his cooking show and we used, everybody used to say he's the he's the freezer bag man because everything he marinated, it was in, uh, Absolutely, in freezer yeah. bag. So, But it I, just makes sense. You can rub yeah. it around, mm -hmm. you can shake it, the whole works, yeah. yeah. So. So anyways, this piece of meat, as we said, is a, uh, is a sirloin roast. Uh, the uh, marinade is actually a homemade one that a friend of ours came up with. I have to admit, I've, I've copied it. Yes. But and it's and a you're going to share the secret recipe I with I'm going to share the secret recipe Fantastic. with you. Yeah. Careful with royalties, though, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what we do is we take the roast, and the first thing you do is take the Montreal steak uh, rub, yeah. rub it all over it. Nice. And then the second thing is, um, and you can see I've made some incisions here. And so I'll put cloves oh, of garlic all over it. There's probably 10 cloves of garlic in this, wow, maybe eight. Nice. Then after that, what you do is you take a half a bottle of uh, red wine. Perfect. Uh, the uh, varietal doesn't really matter. No. <laughs> Whichever <laughs> Except you like for to drink. what you're going to drink afterwards. That's exactly. right, so you exactly. better like it. <laughs> so you put that in there and you put some uh, fresh rosemary in there. Uh, and then uh, you put it in the fridge overnight. This is a 24-hour marinade. Okay, yeah. You pull it out the next day, and then it's uh, good to go. Nice. And so the the reason sort of for marinating, you know, are, are we looking to tenderize? What are we sort of... Well, we're at, not only are we tenderizing, but we're adding some great flavor right, uh, of to, to, to the meat. Um, we'll notice over the cooking of this, the aromas that start coming off the barbecue. Wow. Uh, the one thing I really like about the tenderizing in this case is you can take, uh, at least what I've discovered is in... Uh, when you're doing rotisserie and even your regular grilling, yep. uh, by marinating a 24-hour uh, type scenario, you can actually get away with a lesser uh, cut of meat right. and still get it tasting fantastic. Perfect. So, so you don't have to run to the store and spend a whole packet of money on uh, on a beef tenderloin. Exactly. You can, uh, you can use a, sort of a, a bit tougher cut of meat, right? That's like, right. Like the sirloin here. And I guarantee after 24 hours, you, you know, you get this tender. done, it's, it's going to be tender. Very nice. tender. Perfect. So let's take this over and put it on the grill. Okay. Um, so we're back over here, and of course this is, uh, we have our uh, alfresco grill that we're using again. Yep. And what I do is I take the tray and I put it underneath the roast to catch any drippings. Right, okay. Uh, what you're going to find though is we're using an infrared searing burner on this one again. It's a similar uh, burner cool. and to... And it's throwing the heat again. It's like really you, throwing you the really heat. You can feel, feel it, yeah. the heat. Um, and so 
You'll also notice about this one here that there is a built-in chain that you can't see. There's no, no motor was, on this. I was looking on the sides for the one of my, like I have miles with a big motor sticking off the yeah. side, but this one actually has a, a belt-driven motor from the inside. Yeah, a belt-driven motor from the inside. Awesome. The other thing you'll notice is we do not have any heat on from below. I was going to so ask about that, yeah. All the heat is from the back. So this is this okay. direct cooking is going to sear the outside of this uh, roast, and then um, once we're done, we're going to cut it open and have a taste of it. The thing I love about rotisserie is it's almost self-basting, isn't it? Yeah. So as it turns slowly inside the barbecue, probably I'm assuming with the lid down. Yes, with the lid down. It's, it's reincorporating all its juices as it goes, right? Like it's really exactly, it, and it's a very easy thing to do. You only have to check on this once or twice, yep. and then of course uh, with medium rare, you pull it off usually when you have an internal temperature of about 135. Okay. Perfect. Let it sit for that five minutes or stand as we call it. Yeah. And then you're good to go. So I hit the button. The rotisserie's going. <laughs> That's just too easy, Mike. And you and I have about, on this particular cut of meat, we have about 35 to 40 minutes of doing Wait. nothing. <laughs> Sounds like just about enough time to finish off that half bottle of wine that uh, we left. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so we'll be right back when this is ready to go. Perfect. Okay. We're back. It's been about, what, 45 minutes to an hour or so? Around 45 minutes you do, uh, based on the, the weight of it. Yeah, and depending on how you like your uh, roast up. Yeah, Perfect. exactly. So here we are. Look at that. It's looking great. I already did the temperature check. It's 135, so it should Very be about nice. medium rare. Perfect. I Let's love medium rare Let's get this baby steak. off here. Oh, look at that. It's this look, the smell. Awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, you can really smell it. I mean, the yeah. red wine comes through oh, nicely. comes through nicely. And then Just I'll tell you, so your little secret ingredients that are hiding in there. Keep the gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> that secret ingredient of garlic in there, though, yeah. uh, I can really smell it now. It's fantastic. Yeah. There we go. Look oh, at that. Just sitting the caramelization, right there nicely. Lovely color. I'll just get this out of the way. And now let's cut this baby up and yeah, check it out. Yeah, let's get in there. I want to try some of that. Like you say, who needs plates? We'll just eat, eat it right off here. That's right. So, so normally at home, what we'd want to do is let this rest for. Of uh, course. You know, uh, again, it depends on the size yeah. of your roast, but look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. But you want to let that rest so those juices yes. don't all run you out. You don't of want there. the juices all running out. And like you say, normally you would let that rest for five minutes or so. Look There's at that. Look garlic. at the garlic. Oh, the smell. That's Anyways, cooked, there we go. Too, Mike, that looks fantastic. Well, why don't we just? Uh, Four for you, a, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. I'll cut us up each a piece. And there we go. Bon appetit. For you. Cheers. All right. All right, cheers. Mmm. <laughs> oh mm. yeah. You just the flavors come through here. Mm -hmm. I feel like Guy Fieri. <laughs> <laughs> Talking with your mouth full. Oh, <laughs> well, but the garlic really permeates through the meat, and then the caramelization. It gives it that nice crunch, mm -hmm. a nice crust. And again, mm -hmm. you can't tell this is a relatively inexpensive mm -mm. cut of meat. Really nice and tender. Gorgeous. Well done, Mike. Well, I think I'm going to do one of these at home this weekend. I'm going to give it a try myself. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Thanks very much, Mike. Glad to see you again. Yeah, Take care. Pleasure, pleasure to be here. We're going to head back into my kitchen now when we come back on Cooking on the Coast. We're back in the kitchen to finish up our gluten-free chickpea chocolate cake with raspberry coolie and vanilla ice cream. As you can see, there's lots of action going on in our pans right now. The coolie's been simmering away. You can see it's starting to thicken up a little bit. The bubbles have sort of changed a touch there. That's the sugar in there coming out. And over here, we have our candy. We're started, what we're gonna do is sort of a, a burnt orange caramel candy. And what we wanna do is look for that sort of hard crack stage, which takes that caramel up to a stage where when it cools, it becomes brittle okay so that's your basis for like a, a peanut brittle would be the same sort of process here but again we're dealing with chocolate and chickpeas orange they go together hand in hand while we're waiting for this to come up to color we're gonna strain out our raspberry coulis through a nice fine mesh sieve this is a really important part here let's turn that off this is a really important part here because raspberries are full of seeds as you know we want to make sure we get all or as many of those seeds as we can out of there. So we're gently just gonna turn this and push it around. You definitely don't wanna squeeze that through because that'll push the seeds through. We're just gonna give it a gentle turn here. Now the candy goes really quickly. Once it starts to go to that color, you'll wanna move fast. 
Okay, again, you notice I'm not pressing those seeds through. I'm just getting all those juices. All right, that looks great. Coolie has a nice consistency. Over to the pan, we can just leave it right there. We'll keep our spoon for a bit later. Now be very, very careful when you're working with, with sugar like this. Candy is uber hot, like hotter than you can ever imagine. If you get that on your finger, it's a terrible, terrible burn. So please be very, very careful. Great, getting some really nice color here now. So we're making an orange brittle, or what we call an orange brittle. So we have an orange and some zester. Once this gets to the color we're looking for, actually a little before the color we're looking for, we're gonna pull it off the heat and let it cool down just a touch. If we were to add it right now, that, or that heat in that sugar would burn our orange peel. Some nice looking color there. We're probably about 10 seconds away. Now again, there's gonna be carryover cooking here, so that means it's just gonna keep going. That heat's still in the pan. We're using really high quality pans here. Canadian made stuff, this is great. And that's exactly what you want. So we'll pull it off. You see the color that's in there now? We haven't hit the burning stage. I hear ya, I'm being good. Okay, we haven't hit the burning stage. It's got a nice color, it's gonna be super sweet. Start to have that caramel flavor. Now with this fancy zester here, we're just gonna make nice long strands of orange peel and go right in there. And you can hear it sort of starting to fry. I'll give it another nice one. There we go, that's lots. Set that off to the side. See that color? Isn't that awesome? And now, over to our sheet pan. Right here we have a non-stick sill pad, it's called. You could use parchment as well, but in this case we want something that's gonna release this sugar really quickly. Now, just nicely pour it right onto our pan. Try and get a nice even layer. There we go. Look at that. And as this cools, that's gonna harden right on there. Now, you know what? I'm not entirely happy with the amount of zest I got in there, so before it sets, I'm gonna add a little bit more right to the top of it here. The nice thing is, is that'll stick right to that candy. And it'll be awesome. There we go. Let's move on to what we've all been waiting for. Now, does that look like it has a can of chickpeas in it? Not a chance. You can use the same technique as any regular cake that might have flour in it. You poke it with a, a skewer or a uh, toothpick, and if it comes out clean, it's ready. Kind of get underneath the parchment and pull it up. Look at that. That's right, no flour. How amazing is that? Slide this right over, I'll pull our plate over here actually. Let's do it in front. Slide that right onto our plate. Now we have this wonderful coolie right on top. The color will amaze people as well. Now, at the restaurant I work at, we make all our own ice creams. That can be a lot of work, so pick your favorite. In this case, you wanna use a nice vanilla ice cream. I'm just gonna give it a good scoop here. We don't wanna be too shy. We want people to come back to our house for dinner, right? There we go. Nice scoop of ice cream. And we have a little bit of that candy, just right here. That's what the sort of finished result looks like. Oh, that's kind of too big a piece. Let's find one with some nice orange in it. There we go. Stick that right in beside it. Piece of fresh mint. Mint's there to help freshen your breath after, your, uh, after you've finished eating your dessert. Right on the side, and then some lovely fresh raspberries. And we'll just put these around the plate a little bit here. Always try and work in odd numbers too. That's a general rule of thumb in the cooking world. All those French chefs out there think that you can only do threes and fives, so we try to stick with that rule. And there we have it, our chocolate chickpea gluten-free cake with raspberry coulis and vanilla ice cream. Now what better way to enjoy some chocolate cake than wash it down with the beverage pairing? With me today, Kathy Macri. How are you, Kathy? I'm great. Thanks for coming on the show today. My pleasure, awesome. especially for this cake. Well, gluten-free, and as we know, you've gone gluten-free. I have had to go gluten-free, and chocolate cake is my weakness, so finding this recipe was very important oh, to perfect. me. Oh, perfect. Well, and I have to admit, you were the one who introduced me to this uh, type of gluten-free cake using you. the chickpeas. You, you really did. You could not guess what this was yeah. made from. No, I couldn't, and, and I think it was. I think it's really incredible how it adds that texture, like the chickpeas and such. So, so going gluten-free, how have you found that experience? Has it been you know challenging? What? It has been really challenging. As you know, I kind of eat and drink for a living, so That's going right. gluten-free is really was really tough for me. But I was not well for a lot of years, yeah. and discovering that I was gluten intolerant, not celiac, but gluten intolerant, yeah. 
it has made me a lot healthier and happier since I went off of gluten. And now we talked about this before. So going to restaurants, as we like to do, uh, going to restaurants is a bit challenging for the dessert side of everything. I mean, you can always have a salad or you can have a steak or fish or whatever. Who wants more fruit? Not, no more fruit, no more <laughs> sorbet. We want some with some sustenance. So yes. this chickpea cake with absolutely zero flour in it uh, is the answer, I think. I mean, and this is wonderful. the great thing for you chefs is that with most gluten-free baking, it doesn't stand up to time. The right. next day or two days later, not good mm -hmm. at it's all. It's all dry, doesn't it? it tastes like cardboard. Texture is horrible. Yeah. This cake actually improves over, I've saved it up to a week. Right, and still stays nice and moist. It does. Now, Kathy and I know each other from a great event called Taste that goes on here in Victoria. And this is also where it ties us into, uh, as a wonderful segue, yes. ties us into Vistadoro. <laughs> so why don't you tell me a little bit about the wine? Uh, just like you, Vistadoro has been at Taste all five years. <laughs> Perfect. They come over from Langley and they grow walnut trees. They make all sorts of fabulous products. And with this in particular, they take their green walnuts that they harvest in July and they soak them in brandy that comes oh, wow. from Okanagan Spirits. And it is used to fortify a red wine blend. Oh, so more of a fortified wine, very cool. Yeah, would you like a little yeah. taste? Yeah, I'd love to I try some, of course. it's gonna go really well. And these green walnuts are used in two other applications, the same green walnuts, uh, which makes uh, sustainability Almost. a very happy thing on the farm. Yeah, multi-use, I love that. Yes. That's great. Well, look at the color on that, hey, it's incredible. Isn't it something? That's that, that's that fortified wine look, right? And you can... Of course, I poured more for myself. <laughs> nice work, Sorry I know. That. Short pour over here. It smells amazing. You can really smell the sweetness. Mm. It tastes like a port, doesn't it? Wow, very nice. Now, let's see how it works with this cake here. I'm going to see if it's as good as mine. I, I'd say ladies first, of course. <laughs> You're never a gentleman. Come on, Gary. Rarely, rarely. Just for television. Call me on a good day. <laughs> there we go. Mm. Perfect texture. So smooth. Mm. It does taste like a flourless chocolate cake that you'd get in a very high-end restaurant. Mm -hmm. And how is it with the oral? Oh, wow. Amazing with that wine. Like the fortified sweetness in it and then the richness of that chocolate mm -hmm. and the chickpeas is amazing. Really delicious. I want more cake. Yeah, please do. Dig in. This is for us to share. We don't want the camera guys to get any. Forget that. <laughs> That's only one small piece. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> mm. So great, Kathy. Thank you so much for being on my show today. My pleasure. That's fantastic. Thank you. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching and don't forget, savor the flavor. Mm -hmm.